I have a Jeep Grand Cherokee 2001 Laredo and uh, I have uh, an issue with the transmission. So the transmission is slipping or not uh, uh, changing gears at a lower speed. So for example, when I want to uh, make a turn or starting up, uh, it doesn't switch shift from the first gear to the second gear or third gear. So I thought maybe I should change the oil and I did change the oil and the pan. You will find another video on my channel uh, related to that, but that didn't fix that issue. And still I have an issue with uh, shifting. Um, so what I decided is I should change the solenoid uh, sensor here. So here I have the part and I will put the part number on on my video and the link to buy it. I bought it from uh, Amazon. This part was around uh, around uh, 65, 70 dollars, uh, depending on you know what deal is going on at that time. And I've seen as high as 80 dollars or more. So this part is the sensor. It's a maintenance part. It has been changed once before uh, by the dealership when it had low miles. Um, so I decided to change that. And also I'm going to switch this spring, the actuator spring. I heard uh, this also goes bad. I've never replaced that. So this, this part is, is around $5. So it's not an expensive part. And what I need is a pan to collect the oil. I'm going to probably use the same oil because I changed it a couple of weeks back. So the first thing is I'm going to drain the uh, transmission fluid from the drain pan. And I have replaced this drain pan. This is a doorman drain pan. I can put the number in and you can watch my other video. So this one has a bolt, which is a 17 millimeter bolt. And um, this will help me drain the um, transmission fluid. If you don't have it, if you have the original pan from uh, from uh, Chrysler or Jeep, um, it, it doesn't have a drain bolt. Um, so or drain plug so you might have to siphon out some uh, fluid before you can drop the pan otherwise it will be a mess and you can use any of those siphon pumps or you know I can show you some of those you can use um, this siphon pump is an oil pump that you can uh, put the hose into through the uh, through the uh, uh, transmission uh, fill, filling hose or check check hose check port and that will siphon out or I can I also use this one I use for the boat engine to change oil so either one will work it will suck out most of the oil as much as you can and then it will let you drop the pan so once it drains um, I will take this pan off and these are the bolts and they take the um, half inch socket and uh, there are 14 bolts in there you can watch my other video also uh, where I change the oil and the pan with the pan removed what you are seeing here is this is the filter the the black one and there are two torque screws here so I'm going to use a, a screwdriver with a torque screw bit um, just like this and you should be able to get the two screws out keep the uh, pan underneath it because there is some uh, fluid that is trapped so this is the screw it's like a it's like a torque screw head so you need a um, hex head in there and there are two bolts here so you want to catch the fluid that will drip and let it drip for a little bit. These two bolts take a 11 millimeter socket and you can remove these two and then there will be two more um, this one and this one right so what I found is um, these bolts are 
uh, too tight for a screwdriver by hand so I was able to fit the bit into uh, my um, my power driver here and I was able to open that that way otherwise it's it's very tight I'm going to remove these two bolts as well there is one bolt right here and the other one is right here so this is holding the bracket so if I remove this one it will be easier for me to to take the solenoid off so this one takes an 11, 11 millimeter socket and um, Actually, I will, I will remove both of them so that the whole harness, the whole bracket comes down. So I will leave the, um, I will leave the this gasket in here. The gasket needs to go in. You can replace the gasket as well. And with this one removed, it would be easier to take these these two harnesses off so this one is for the solenoid it if you if you flip this up a little bit and this should come off and you can see this this one has come off and then I'm going to remove this one as well that's the sensor and this one has has the the tab for locking so to open it you want to it's very similar to the other harness electrical harnesses that uh, is with Jeep so you want to pull this tab and then push on the little tab right here and then pull it out once you have removed it from the from the underneath the jeep it's easier to work with if you have um, removed it um, so this might be stuck in there the this plate is going to push against um, the body here and this is also probably lodged in there so what I'd suggest is you take a screwdriver a flathead screwdriver and give it a little tug and it should pop out just like that so now you have the solenoid out usually these solenoids are replacement parts they need to be replaced over time my Jeep has around 128,000 miles I had replaced it probably around 50 or 60,000 miles by the dealer and I had the similar problem with changing of um, the lower gears and some people have tried to clean this solenoid and maybe it will work um, but in my case I'm just going to replace it it's since you are doing it yourself it's exactly the same always should use Mopar parts um, I would not take a chance with an aftermarket uh, or different brand so this is uh, the part number I will put on and I will put it back in here so make sure that it goes into this slot just like it, it was so I will clean it up put it back in and connect it so a few things to mention here is if you are doing your own maintenance it's good idea to replace this part as well this is the pressure uh, sensor here and this part is around uh, 60 70 dollars I'm going to leave it for now because I don't have any warning lights on it if you get a warning light like in the 1700 um, which is the transmission uh, low pressure sense or pressure issue then you should replace this part as well um, I'm going to just replace the solenoid the other thing is in the bag which came you can see that there is some um, transmission fluid in there and some people have commented that uh, this looks like a used part it's not actually a used part these solenoids have been tested for pressure and they have been tested before uh, in the factory and uh, before they are sealed 
So it might look like it is used, but it is not. They have been pressure tested. So it should be good if you have a little bit of uh, liquid as you uh, receive it. So when you are putting it back, make sure that the, the solenoid uh, is, this plate goes into the groove and there is, should be one groove. I've seen some other aftermarket ones which has multiple grooves and there might be issues with that if you are not properly seating it and the spacing uh, where it reads it, uh, the end may not be uh, equally distance or the distance might matter. So you can see how I'm spacing it here or uh, putting the groove. So if you use a Mopar, it should not be a problem. It should be an exact fit. The other thing is once you, once you are able to put this, make sure this is also seated on this one. You want to press it and you heard that click. That click is important because that click sets it for, um, properly into this side. Otherwise uh, you will have issues with um, the transmission again. Putting it back, uh, I have connected the harnesses. Just make sure that you lock the tab. So the red tab right here is locked. So you need to push it all the way. So putting it back, um, don't want to tighten these bolts until you tighten these screws because the screws need to go in first and um, I have I have loosened these these bolts a little bit so that these screws line up properly and you want to tighten these so um, and just make sure that the harnesses are properly um, connected so otherwise you will have real issues so you have to drop the pan again and that should uh, do the solenoid and the next one is I will take these bolts off and for the uh, for the spring you may want to collect any uh, transmission fluid so I will put the uh, pan underneath it so I took the spring about uh, spring out and guess what I found is the spring is broken and now I wonder the problem I was facing was due to the spring so either way um, I have a new spring which was good because I wanted to change the spring and see how this spring has snapped and probably all the problems I was getting was due to that so this is a easy fix <clears throat> you get a new spring you put it in and that goes in <clears throat> in that channel to put the new spring it's very easy um, you put the the spring holder just make sure that uh, the the wiring harness is is um, passing through this so it doesn't get dislodged. I'm going to tighten the screws here. Um, don't need to tighten it too, too much, just a little tightening would be fine. To put the pan back on, it's a good idea to just screw the bolt through the gasket. I use the same gasket that came with the car. So these Mopar gaskets are, are really good. If you want to change it, that's fine. Um, this should uh, be tightened enough that it doesn't leak. And often you will uh, see that there will be some leak after you pour the uh, transmission fluid and you run it. Um, so to make it easier to put on, I first uh, screw in all the bolts through the gasket so it will hold in place and then I will put the, the pan up and tighten it. So I hand tighten each bolt and you want to tighten it as much as you can because usually um, these leak if you have any uh, space in between. So make sure all the bolts are tightened. To fill the transmission fluid, um, you have to fill it through 
the dipstick transmission dipstick so I'll take this off and I use a, a long funnel if you don't have it you might face a little trouble but uh, this funnel is also a um, little tapered to go into this transmission thing and it fits right there and then I will pour in the the transmission fluid for the transmission fluid I use the Mopar ATF plus 4 and this is what is recommended for Jeep uh, I don't want to skimp on the fluid portion since I'm doing the transmission service myself so I filled up uh, the fluid as much as I think it needed and if I check the the level it looks like it is it is there I'm doing a test drive and it, it's it's uh, switching fine on the lower gears and I'm going to get on the highway and test the overdrive and usually if the spring uh, the actual spring is broken the overdrive will will act funny So you can see that the uh, gears are shifting much better. It's uh, way smoother than it was before. So usually I get uh, around 2000 rpm or a little lower at 60 uh, miles per hour look it kicked into the overdrive and it was pretty smooth so that seems to have fixed the issue uh, hope it uh, helps and if you guys like the video um, Click on the like button and subscribe to my channel Hope you can fix your uh, transmission issues uh, With this video as I showed